تو آقا مبارک باشه صحنه صحنی که با اسم زهرات ازن زیارت برای من بسته به یک پل که چشمات بسته به یک پل که چشمات آقا مبارک باشه محمد علی محمد السلام علیکم respected debuters و رحمت الله و برکاته Welcome back to a live show from the shrine of the Prince of Believers, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Peace and blessings be upon him. We are now standing here in his holy shrine on this blessed and holy day. That is the day of his birthday. And what a day it is to celebrate. We are standing now, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, under the rain. is <coughs> pouring on us and there is no worry in the world. People are here under the rain praying. As you know, the dua under the rain is, is a great dua. And we are here next to the shrine of Al Mu'mineen in the rain praying for the reappearance of the 12th Imam Imam Sahib Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance. Insha'Allah, for today's live show, I will be joined by a dear friend of mine a bit later on, Brother Ahmed Ali. Where we will continue the festivities and the celebrations and the discussions around the life of Amir Al Mu'mineen. Peace and blessings be upon him. Salam but for now, Oh, I heard my name. Salam. I heard my name. Well, I said I said later in the show. It's okay. Now. It's alright. Well, he's here, so let's let's go with it, inshallah. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Today's a special day. It is. I mean, as you mentioned, it is raining. Yeah. Um, I I got the privilege of walking around the holy shrine. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And and to see the atmosphere isn't as packed as yesterday. Uh, it's it's because the rain and stuff. People are getting you know to secure areas out of the rain. Um, but no, I mean, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Everyone uh, is here to 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 celebrate. Uh, but the key points that we want to focus on tonight is, you know, picking up from yesterday where we left off, is the courage of the young teen, Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam, and the oneness of Allah in the eyes of Ali ibn Talib. If we really think about it, a lot of people yesterday we did mention if, if people take Ali ibn Talib as the God for them, then what kind of God does Ali ibn Talib if have? Just a slave, yeah. If he's just a slave of? I mean, if we comprehend that, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Imam Ali was asked about him, he says, woe to you. Do you really think that existence can bear his existence? SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. I mean, he, it's, it, his physical existence, his presence as well as his spiritual, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the eye cannot really counter what or, or the, the, the magnanimity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, no to, to the extent where Ali ibn Talib says there is no place where Allah has not seen and there is no place where Allah cannot see you in a lot of people doubt that but, but it's like you're saying there's no way to, to describe God to understand God the correct way which is why he left us to Ahlul Bayt because the human mind is limited so Allah gave us the Ahlul Bayt to make that link between us and him. So how great must these people be to connect us to our creator, mm -hmm. the one who created the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of people say, what, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great and he can you know, give us this great mind to think, create cell phones, create cameras, create whatever we want, why didn't he just link us through to him right away? Why do we have to go to intermediates like Ahlul Bayt alayhim mm -hmm. A simple example that answers the question is when you read a philosophical book that has, you know, leaf philosophical, if someone wants to read the books of Shakespeare, you need anecdotes at the, at, at the side to tell you what this means and what that means. Do you think that Prophet Muhammad brought Islam for people to not understand or to not have role models to look up to and learn from? Really? We need to keep that in mind is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the book and gave us the Ahlul Bayt which will not Definitely. separate and people want a direct link to Allah well that direct link is who? Is the Ahlul Bayt. Is the Ahlul Bayt and specifically mm. Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam. Mm, so. A short story, sure. I would like to mention it before I hand it over to you is one time Imam Ali was asked who is better? You or Adam, father of mankind? Allah, yes, yes. He says, 
it's 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 not nice to you know be proud of yourself. It's not nice to make yourself look you know very proud and be proud about your characteristics and your your, your abilities. So he says, let's look at the Quran. They looked at the Quran. The Quran says, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He created Adam and Hawa, He said, do not go near that tree and do not eat from it, but live freely mm. in the uh, in the Garden of Eden in heaven. Live freely, but do not get to that tree. They were curious, so they went and ate from they it. They went and ate from that tree. Yeah, Ali ibn Talib says, by Allah, I have not done anything I like. Anything that I like. You would not have gone for that tree. I have forbidden it by myself. Why? Because the things that we like, some people are unfortunate or misfortunate to have the things we like. So Ali ibn Talib refrained from that. Then the question goes, he says, who is better, you or Nuh? Allah, he's going to go from prophet to prophet. Prophet to prophet. Allah. He says, you are Nuh. He says, Nuh cursed his nation. He asked Allah to descend his damnations upon, to send his damnations upon his nations. Yet I did not curse the ones who took my right. Allah. This is Ali Nabi Talib. Then he says, Nuh had a son which Allah cursed in the Quran and my sons are the master of the youth of paradise. This is the comparison with him and Noah. Then they go to Moses. When Moses, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to go and talk to Pharaoh after he killed one of the uh, Israelites, he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Moses says, he says, oh Allah, I am scared to, talk, to go and talk to Pharaoh because I just killed one of them. So I am afraid that they're gonna kill me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, I have taken fear out of the hearts of my messengers. So don't worry and go. Yet Moses was fearful. Then Ali ibn Talib, he says, <laughs> as you Ali ibn Talib knows fear. You know, he says, when Prophet Muhammad sent me to send a letter to Quraysh, I did it with no fear, knowing that I have killed the bravest from Quraysh. In the right way, of course, for the right cause. Then he says, who is better? You or Isa mm. or Jesus? Mam Ali alayhi salam, he says, if you look at the story of Jesus and what's going on and how he came about to life, his mother devoted him to the house of God. Yet I was born in the house, in the house of God. Allah. This is the difference between when, when his When his mother wanted to give birth, Allah he told that she cannot enter the mosque and give birth. This is the story. Yes. He cannot enter the mosque. Whereas for Ali ibn Abi Talib, the house of God, the Kaaba split open. So the mother can enter and Ali ibn Abi Talib was born. Fatima bint Asad. Subhanallah. Peace and blessings be upon her. Look at the comparison. When we hear ulama, ummati, anbiya, bani Israel, bal afdal, the scholars of my ummah are the same rank as the prophets of Bani Israel or even higher. Think about it if they have taken Ali ibn Abi Talib as the role model. And this is just uh, like it reminds me of the story um, when in battle uh, he had disarmed the enemy and then the enemy asked him for his sword. Yes, the sword, his sword, Dhul Fiqar, the, the great sword of Ali, Amir al Mu'minin. The enemy asked him for his sword. What do you think Amir al Mu'minin done? He handed the sword he over. He handed the sword over. The, the man goes to him, How did you just hand me your sword? We're in a battle. He goes, how can I reject someone who asks me for something? Wow. This is Amir al-Mu'min. He handed his sword over. Subhanallah. Like, and he said to him, do you think that the sword is protecting me? Ali ibn Abi Talib. The hand of God. Do you think he needs a sword? And he's just... Alhamdulillah, al uh, Hadana, hadana yeah, li, yeah. To this, to this, this is just... Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. I would like to mention something also sure. by Ibn Abi Al-Hadid, uh, an Egyptian commentator on Nahj al mm, Yes. He said if one was to ponder upon the eloquence of Ali ibn Abi Talib in Nahj al balagha he would find him the most eloquent individual to ever write to the point where philosophers, thinkers, scholars, came to conclude that the person that came up with such eloquence mm. does not exist and could not exist. 
That's why it's called the peak of eloquence. It's the peak. There's, no, the there's no, nothing above the peak. Yeah. And he says, when people read about the bravery of Ali al Talib, as you just mentioned, and the courageousness, and the way that he really sacrificed whatever he had and never put down anyone. You remind me of the eloquence of Amir al Mamni in the, his letters, actually. Yes. The letter that was written to uh, Malik al Ashtar. Yes. On governance. Mm -hmm. That letter till today is being used as a template in the UN. Yes. Now this is not announced. Would, no one would dare to announce that we are taking letters from an Islamic leader, you know, Islam itself, Amir al Mu'mineen. They wouldn't announce it. But till today it is used as a template to form constitutions, to, to create laws. That's Ali ibn Abi Talib. He's not just for one period of time. He's till the end of time. He's from the start of time till the end of time. Now, th this is who we are talking about right now. It's not just bravery. It's not just uh, selflessness. It's not just a father of the orphans. It's everything that is good in the world. It's everything that is good in creation. He is the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Ahlul Bayt are created from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. This is who they are. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I would like to mention something. The sun just came out. It's amazing. Oh, I don't know if you can see the dome. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. But I, I, I want to make uh, a, a very quick statement. A lot of people, when they hear about Ali ibn Abi Talib being the bravest warrior, the fearless warrior, warriors are you know, taken as individuals who bloodthirsty. They love to just kill. You know, when they go into the battlefield, everything that's in front of them is dead. No one should leave the battlefield alive. This is what a warrior thinks when he goes into the battlefield. He's well, I think this is what people think a warrior is. Yes. Yeah. But Ali ibn Abi Talib, on the other hand, we see him a man of principle. On the battlefield, only the ones coming forth to him, he fights. The ones, even if you're close to Ali ibn Talib, and you turn your back to him and you run, Ali ibn Abi Talib will not strike you. He's a man of principle. Ali ibn Abi Talib on the battlefield, he did not give his back to the enemies. Why? Because the enemies did not get the chance to get the back of Ali ibn Talib. SubhanAllah. To that point, and on off of the battlefield, on his regular days, he was a compassionate father to the orphans. Mm. On regular days, he was the person that really showed compassion towards everyone, showed equality, justice. I would say it's rarely to find, but I don't think you can as, find. As in, you find these characteristics, maybe one of this char these characteristics in a certain person, yeah. one in another person. Like, I know you're a warrior. I know you're, I, I, you're, you're yeah, Ahmed's brave, <laughs> no. but you don't find uh, all the characteristics in no. Ahmed. Maybe one here, one there, maybe one in this brother here, one in that person there. But all of these great characteristics in one man, what, what sort of man Courage is this? over here. Of course, of course. I try, I try yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to the discussion. Allah. Alhamdulillah. Um, before we continue, I want to, you know, we forgot to mention at the beginning, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a blessed occasion to be here and Definitely. for that reason I would like to congratulate you, congratulate you, uh, congratulate everyone you. across the world, um, you know, everyone across the world that really believes in Ali Talib and honestly I don't believe there's one person out there that does not believe in Ali Talib because if you believe in the aspect of just unless you're really messed up in the head, <laughs> like you know people are who are radicals. People, there are a few people out there. Yeah who are really messed up in the head, then you would think what's what's going on in their mind. But anyways, whoever believes that Ali ibn Abi Talib is that man of courage, is that man of loyalty, is that man of justice and equity, then you know that every single person relates to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah, like we mentioned yesterday, Ali ibn Abi Talib is not just yeah. in Islam and in our books. He, he's in the Bible, yes. he's in the Torah, he's in the Quran, like these are great things, you know what I'm saying? SubhanAllah, on this festive occasion, we can do nothing but laugh and be joyful. Yes. No matter how angry someone is, no matter how much anger or, or pain he has in their heart, on a day like this, you can do nothing but laugh and rejoice. <laughs> I mean, that's why they say, uh, <laughs> SubhanAllah. Like, be happy, be joyful. 
for you know our joy, the birth of Ali ibn Abi Talib. What better can you get other than this occasion in this place? Subhanallah, it reminds me of uh, yesterday after we finished our live show. Yes. I think we were laughing for a period of three to four hours constantly about what we don't know. I don't think you just, you yeah, don't yeah, need to mention that. Yeah, I'm not going to mention details, but about what I don't know. Just, we're just happy to be here. Happy to be here, not just on any day, on the day of the birth of this great man, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And honestly, uh, to add a point to what uh, Saint said, when you're in Najaf, a lot of people tend to have the feeling that when you're here, you get depressed because of Wadi Salam, uh, so many dead people. Uh, but really when you're in Najaf, especially in Najaf, not in Kufa, in, in, in Najaf, you know, there, there, there are a lot of, you know, things going on between the, Was that a racist comment I had? No, 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 no. It's, it's not racism. No racism is intended. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, everything is good. Alhamdulillah. But I mean, you get the feeling. Because honestly, when you see a grave, you feel depressed. The only place where you don't feel depressed is near the Holy Shrine of Ali Muqadi. Absolutely. That's absolutely. the only place you don't feel depressed. Near the Holy Shrine of Ali Muqadi. Especially on these rejoiceful days. Yes. Of course, on the days of Shahada, it's like, Darkness has entered. We're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. But I would like to mention this side point that you must not forget that, inshallah, tomorrow is the night of the Shahada of Bibi Zainab, the daughter and the orphan of Amir al Mu'minin. Yes. So please remember this when you pray for the reappearance of the Imam. So you can come uh, take the thaw, take the vengeance, avenge what happened to Sayyidah Zainab. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's get back to. Uh, Celebrations. We're going to get into this now, yeah. inshallah. We will uh, have a program on this, so tune in as well into the channel inshallah. so we can keep you updated. Inshallah, inshallah. But now, yeah. we will go into a short break. Uh, so enjoy the views that you will get uh, around the Holy Shrine of Imam Ali Talib, and then we'll come back to you shortly. So do stay tuned. Inshallah. <laughs> شعبه به پای آقا مونه بارونه بارون امشب خوشیمون فراونه بارون این قد خدا شاده جتا شعبه به پای آقا مونه شعبه وقتی رو دوش نبی میره با کوه میشه شونه به شونه کعبه ترک خوردن ای ساده است محشر میشه وقتی میدونه مدیونم به خوبی تو ای کریم یا حیدر مدیونم که مبتلاتم از قدیم که هستی توی زندگی به خوبیات ای کریم یا حیدر علی 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 یا خوشیمون فراونه بارونه 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 اینقدر خدا شاده که حتا کعبش به پای آقا مونه باش دست بیاد بالا کار خدایی داره چشمات جا خود داره موجزت آقا چه کف پاهای اسمت سنگ و تلا می کنه مولا سنگ و علی 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 
وقتی علی با انگشتش کند در خیبر رو از جا حتما میشه زلزل وقتی با دست میکند در و مولا با دست میکند سر میشه نوکریمون در و علی جون میدی ما نوکر رو به پا علی ما مهره کعبه ما فقط علی یا هشمات I know you did enjoy uh, what you were presented with. You were presented with inserts from the Holy Shrine of Ali Abi Talib alayhi salam. Uh, but specifically in this episode and specifically in this part, uh, I want to talk about uh, how Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam presented his morals, his principles during his daily life. Mm. Kick it off. Um, I think one very important way to see his principles and see his acts is on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time, like we mentioned earlier, is when people hear battle or warrior, they automatically imagine, you know, bloodthirsty, no principles, killing everyone left, right and center, uh, stealing from dead. This is not what a warrior is. A warrior is a man of principle and a man of rules and a man. And so, continuing on uh, what Hussein is saying, mm -hmm. the backbone, of Islam at that time was Imam Ali. The backbone of Prophet Muhammad was Imam Ali. To the point where all the Muslims abandoned Rasulullah, everyone ran to go get the spoils, except for a few, Hamza, Imam Ali, uh, I believe Al-Maqdad or... Uh, There's a few of the... The, 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 the really Sahaba. close companions of the Prophet. There are a few that ran away. And there yeah. Are, like, you can uh, see them are, from mountain to mountain running yeah. away. Uh, that's a quote from the books, obviously, but uh, yeah. when you have Ali ibn Abi Talib, like you mentioned. The backbone of Prophet Muhammad. The, the poet says that Muhammad didn't see, seek refuge on the mountain. Imam Ali was that mountain. Wow. So the Prophet took refuge with Amir al-Mu'mineen in that battle. Wow. So Imam Ali was that mountain of Uhud. He's the one who protected the Prophet from all directions. This is um, where we hear the quote coming down. You're very famous with this quote, La Fata illa Ali, wa la Saif illa bil Fiqar. When the Fiqar came down, handed over to Imam Ali, he says, There is no brave young man, young warrior like Zul Fiqar, like Imam Ali. La Fata illa Ali, wa la Saif. And there is no sword like Zul Fiqar, the sword of Ali Talib alayhi salam. Who really, for the three things, Islam would not have continued. The faithfulness of Ali ibn Talib, the Iman Ali ibn Talib, Amwal Khadija, was safe Ali ibn Talib. You need faith of Abu Talib, the wealth of Khadija, and the sword. Sword doesn't mean bloodshed. It doesn't mean bloodshed. Sword it means, means defending, defending your, your principles. Yeah, defending your principles. Defending what you really care for. If a person walks into any house, threatens. To hurt your family, to that, hurt that the, your sword is coming ones. out. That is, uh, it's it's that not just a sword. Out. Whatever is near you, <laughs> a table, tea table, a couch, whatever, whatever is near you. Uh, you're defending yourself with whatever you got. So, and the law is with you on that. The law is not gonna say, oh, you know what? You picked up your 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 butter knife and you hit that person. No, you're defending your. Home, your honor, your family. Someone your wealth. comes to breach your rights, you have to defend your rights. We're not saying go, you know, rage wars, no. But, but when, when war is raged against you, defend yourself. Defend it. And we see that here. Sorry to cut you off every time. Yeah, no, 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 it's okay. We see that here when uh, when ISIS Allah, came into Iraq. Everyone, every youth able to bear arms at the time went up to face them. I ask, where did they get this from? From this one man who stood against injustice and against tyranny. Two months before, to, to cut you off, mm. two months before the whole ISIS thing, you know, became uh, so waged in Iraq and everyone is talking about it. Youth were filling the streets, having fun, going to whatever they want to go to. You know, it's just, just youth. You know, youth want to have fun. They're just like we, we want to have fun. The moment where scholars came out and said that you have to go defend the rights 
because now is the time where Islam is at the most dangerous times. Everyone knows. Youth, 16, 17, 18, there's a man who within three months lost three kids, three men, three young warriors in the battlefield. He went home, he has a 14 year old. He says, I lost these three, now my 14 year old has to defend his land. Wow. This is the kind of warriors we have. Who does, this, who does this remind us of? It reminds of one. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ali this youth Talib. that really no one stood by the Prophet when the Prophet said, who wants to aid me in my message? When he was 13, one year younger than this individual, Ali stood up to the Prophet, he says, I will help you three times. Even, even till now, sorry, but this, is a, this story obviously is like, it's one of the greatest stories to show, not just a river. And, and, and this is not something made out of position. Hollywood. This is reality. But in the break, when we went on the break, I spoke to one of the servants and he told me the reason the shrine is empty, well not empty, but not as packed as it would be, is because everyone's up north defending it. Wow. So imagine that. If everyone is up north, then who's here? People are going to defend the shrines because if this shrine is gone, life is gone. This is our cause, this is why we exist, to defend the Ahl al-Bayt's rights, to defend their principles, to defend everything about them. Mm -hmm. and, and you see that when yeah. Imam Ali stands up three times, you were saying, brother, yeah. Hadith, I love now, this story. Yeah. Continuing of principles, how did Ali al defend, or, or how did Ali al show his principles? I think many times, and you see it, especially in the Battle of uh, Khandaq, mm -hmm. where I believe it was the Battle of Khandaq when when Rasulullah asked someone to face a warrior. Yes, the warrior keeps on calling. Who is there? Who is Amr brave enough? Amr he goes, who is brave enough to stand against me, the greatest warrior in, 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 in the Arabian world? Who is brave enough? So who stood up? Ali ibn Abi Talib. One time? Three times. Three times. Prophet Muhammad told him to sit down sit because down, he wants Ali. to give the rest of his so-called companions He wants to see who's going to stand with him in the in the times of despair, let's say. So Imam Ali stood up. He said to him, Amir al-Mu'mineen, sit down. Now is not your time. Again, he stood up. He told him, Amir al-Mu'mineen, sit down. Third time he stood up. He goes, is there no one else that's willing to make a stand? Wow. Is there no one else? And this doesn't just show the bravery and the principles of Amir al-Mu'mineen. It shows that Amir al-Mu'mineen was always going to be after the Prophet. We Ghadir Khum is enough evidence by the way. It's in all the books. Everyone knows what this it's is. Enough. Quran, Ahl Bayt, Min Kuntum Awla, these are, these are everywhere. But if you want to look at their lives and the battles and the stand they took, this is one example. But three times he stood up, the fourth, because if there's no one else than Imam Ali, Amir al Mu'mineen, this is your time. It has to defend. And what a battle it was. I mean, just to think about that, people were afraid this warrior was counted. Some narrations say he was counted as, as 300 men and some, not to that extent, they say 180 to 100 men. Wow. He was huge. And you, you see like the WWE fighters, how huge they are, or you know, basketball players. This guy was even bigger than them. He was huge. Counted as 80 to 100 men. It says when Ali ibn Talib, he became to ridicule Ali ibn Talib and we came to insult him. So Ali Talib, you know, gave him a push. One of his parts, his, his foot, fell on to his soldiers, to his fellow soldiers. Killed seven of them. Oh. Just one foot. <laughs> Killed seven. <laughs> you know, it's, some people say, what, you're, you're, you're laughing at, you know, a, a leg getting cut off? No. But an individual should know his position. If you go to I'm, a royal I'm, family, I'm laughing at the fact that someone stood against Amir al and thought they had a chance. As that's not happening. If you go to, to a group of philosophers and you know nothing about philosophy, or you might have read some philosoph uh, philosophical books, you go and sit with them, they're going to destroy you and they're not going to be you know, sympathetic about it, no. In any subject, in anything. So know your position. Mm when you're against Ali ibn Talib. Know your position when you're against Ahl al-Bayt 
because really when you're against them there is, you have no position wait for what's coming that's all we say but what happened in Safin? Safin is a whole nother story Safin, Safin is not just bravery it's, it's, it's a funny story at the same time it's, it's, it shows how Saf Ali ibn Talib is, is, Safin, is a man of bravery Ali ibn Talib you see his bravery spread in his sons you see Imam al Hassan show his bravery in Safin. You see Abu Fadl show his bravery in Safin. You see Imam Hussein show his bravery in Safin. You see them all, the sons of Amir al Mu'mineen, show their bravery in Safin. But there's one thing that Amir al Mu'mineen done that, that really does make me laugh. This situation is, is funny. And I don't know what I would do in that situation. He went up, I was in the battlefield, and uh, some man, a man came up to him, Umar ibn al As. Just kidding, yeah, anyways. Yes. Why would you make me laugh online? <laughs> yeah, that guy. So someone came up to him, Amar ibn As, um, and he saw he had no chance against Amir al-Mu'mineen. This guy's meant to be one of the commanders of the army. Wow. Yeah, really wow. And, so and now does, they, you know, they yeah. send their peace upon him. Wow. Ah, it's a funny wall. So what does he do to try to avoid confrontation with Amir al-Mu'mineen? He it's, knows it's, Imam Ali would never look at an hour. He knows Imam Ali would never look at something haram or do he, anything haram. Get butt naked. See, so, he starts taking off his clothes in the middle of the battlefield because he knows Imam Ali will not confront him while he's in the state. So Imam Ali covers his eyes and turns away and does not confront Umar ibn As because it's something haram. So look at the extent the enemies of Ahl Bayt go to cower themselves from Amir al Mu'mineen. And my question is why oppose him anyway? He's giving you justice, he's giving you honor, he's giving you everything you need in life. They can't live, Salvation. Again, they can't live under that rule. Because the rulers that came before Ali Talib spoiled their close relatives. Yet Ali Talib, when he came, he equaled himself with the individual who just sells dates, with the person who really begs on the streets. He says, I sleep with no food in my stomach, just in case that there's an individual in the West or in the East that might not have food under my reign, that might not have food to eat at night. So he sleeps at night hungry. That's who Ali Talib is. And to add something upon what happened in Safin, we see before Safin, the battles, Ali ibn Abi Talib was, did not allow Al Abbas to join them in their movement or in, in, in every war that, uh, that was raged against them. But Al Abbas insisted, he went to Umm al Bani, he says, Oh mother, I want to join my father and my brothers in the upcoming battle, Safin. So Umm al goes up to Ali ibn Talib, she says to him, Sayyidi O Mawlai, O my master, Abu al-Fadl is begging me to ask you to let him join you in the war. If you can't let him fight, then at least, you know. Let him get some experience. How old was Abu Fadl? He was 11, 11 years, years old. old. 11, 12, some years. 11 say, years yeah. old. According to narrations, authenticated narrations when he got on the horse his feet would touch the ground 11 years old he was huge oh, this is he embodied oh, Ali ibn Abi Talib so he goes to the battlefield the enemies began to you know to act all strong all tough saying to the enemy to, to the army of Ali Talib where is your commander Tell him to come out, we want to face him. Ali ibn Abi Talib, what did he do? It's an amazing story. He told Abu al-Fadl, al-Abbas alayhi salam, wear a mask and, and wear, go to them. And wear my uniform. And, and, and wear his uniform. Wear so they would think that it's Ali ibn Talib going to the battlefield. An 11-year-old. 11-year-old. There were three warriors. Muawiyah says to one of them, I can't remember the names, he says, I want Ali ibn Abi Talib dead. He says, you got that from me. I have three brave sons that will take care of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The first son comes up, Al Abbas finishes him. The second one, finished. Third, finished. The father says, now it's my turn to finish Ali ibn Abi Talib. Thinking that this is Ali ibn Abi Talib. I will follow Al Abbas, one strike finishes this person. Then Imam Ali Al Abbas turns to Imam Ali. Imam Ali nods his head to take off the mask. Abu Al Fadl takes off the mask. And who do they see? 
ليسير عباس قمر بني هاشم قمر دمونا بني هاشم انستيد اوف علي طالب فروم دي 1 وات دوز ذس تيتش اس لايك فادر لايك سن لايك فادر لايك سن ات تيتشز اس ذات ا مان اوف برنسيبل لايك علي بن ابي طالب ريزز ا مان اوف كوراج لايك العباس ريزز تشيلدرن لايك زينب ذا امبوديمنت اوف تشاستيتي اوف مودستي A person, a son like Imam Al Hussein, a person of sacrifice. A person of sacrifice, a person of honor. A person like Imam Al Hassan. You know what? Everything you're saying just makes me want to go to Ziyara. So I'm going to have to leave you here. Sorry, dear viewers. I need to go ask my Hajar right now. What are you doing? All, all this talking, I can't. So, bro, pray for me. What are you doing, bro? Dear We got a show. Yeah, sorry, bro. I need to go to Ziyara. <laughs> Anyways, all right. All right, take care. Uh, so, yes, Brother Hussein uh, is going to do a Ziyara, and he is. Uh, going to mention all of your names. We are live on Facebook, uh, so you can write your names there, write your hajat on the, uh, our Facebook page. And really don't forget to mention uh, the Imam of our time in your du'as. Uh, he's going to uh, pray for you, pray for me as well, uh, pray for everyone uh, that really wants their wishes to be fulfilled. Lastly, before we conclude, Amazing, amazing scene that I'm looking at right now is the dome of Ali ibn Talib alayhi salam. And honestly, to be in such a position, you have to be fortunate. You have to be really fortunate. So the, the only thing we can say right now is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Oh Allah, for the sake of Ali ibn Abi Talib, give us the chance to be among the companions and among not the 313 if we can and if we have the tawfiq if we have the will to be one of them why not but if we can't be one of them let us be one of the individuals who really aids the imam spreads the message of the imam in their unique way i would like to thank you very much for tuning in tonight may allah ali ibn talib and the ahli bayt give us the ability to continue serving them wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh